Okay, so here we are in track number two, titled Suddenly Aware. This is sort of continuing on in the sentence uh, and the theme of the album. This, in my mind, is all about sort of childhood and all of the different times that you become suddenly aware of what it is to be alive. And whereas the first track was just sort of about consciousness in general, themes of birth and the depth of consciousness itself, this one's a little bit more about the sudden awareness and the beauty of existing uh, in the world. I, I contemplated not throwing this track into the album because it's almost a little bit too cheerful, but I really uh, liked the way it turned out and wanted to find a way to justify throwing it in there. So I did. Uh, so this piece um, is really long. It's like 13 minutes. And the way that it effectively effectively functions is in similar uh, fashion to the first track. It's very sort of wave based. So it can be basically cut in half and it basically repeats itself. So this first half here is roughly up until that point, let's say. And then we add in the piano and it just repeats. Um, so this piece started after downloading a, one of the packs from Ableton and it, I was just playing around with some of the, um, the synths that it had in it. And one of them that I liked the sound of was this one called Dark Strings. So I was playing around, and if I turn off the effects on this patch, I was just playing around and came up with something like this. So that's sort of, uh, you can see here in the MIDI, we're really just swapping back and forth between two chords pretty much the entire time. I ended on this nice little F major chord, but for the most part, we are just switching back and forth between this E sus two, this D sus four. Uh, lots of suspensions, sort of weird, not how you'd normally go about writing a track probably, um, but it's ambient music and I wanted it to never feel settled and always have a little bit of interest and mystique to it. So yeah, it, it's really simple, just harmonically, just ba some basic voicings. Um, nothing crazy going on there. That's the MIDI of this main sort of synth sound that you hear that sounds like this. And then just to give it the ambient sound, I've got some DST, which is a really cool uh, multi-band distortion plugin. I Correct me if I'm wrong on that, someone in the comments, um, but it gives a little bit of bite. <laughs> uh, you can hear what that's doing. Some delay some more delay, sort of reverb -y delay, one of these Ableton presets, and then you combine those, you get now all of a sudden a very interesting sound. I added a chorus, and then of course my favorite Valhalla Supermassive, you'll notice that this appears in every single uh, track in this album, uh, some gain, and then an EQ, which is filtering just up and down over the course of the track, just again, anything that I can do to give this a feeling of a wave um, is something that I'm trying to do. So you throw on all of those effects and you get this sound. And I'll play it where it opens up a little bit here. So yeah, really just alternating back and forth between those two, uh, those two chords with this cool synth sound and the effects um, were just meant to yeah give it some ambience, give it some grit, and give it the really um, sort of spacey spacey feel, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I liked that. Um, and then in order to give it a little bit more interest, just with each chord change, um, I went into Albion Colossus here and used one of their synths. And with some effects, um, Pancake is a uh, panning effect, giving it some left and right panning, give it some uh, a little bit less of an intense reverb just to make it feel a little bit more washed out, but not super, uh, or, or, or put it in sort of a space and not have it be so dry 
very basic EQ. You all know what that kind of EQ is doing. Again, some OTT, which is always fun in the world of sound design to throw OTT on things, filter, and then the supermassive for the supermassive. Um, so that is just doing this. Just sticking with the root notes of the chords here, going from E to D. Um, so you layer that with the synth sound and it creates a little bit more interest when the, when the chords change. Just each time we go from that E to the D. Um, and then the next thing, I, I literally, um, I mean, I deleted some things, obviously, like the producing doesn't just like happen where everything's perfect. But I basically went down, like starting from top to bottom here. So then the next thing that came in was like, okay, I want some sort of vocal. Um, my go-to for sort of ambient vocals is arcade because it's super easy and they sound awesome. So without any effects on it, the vocal... Sounds like this. And this is awesome because you get to basically select your key. We're in E minor. And then I just get to play around on the different white notes and get different sounds. Um, yeah, so super simple there. G wanted more reverb, so added one of the classics, um, which is Black Hole, which is a beautiful sounding reverb. Um, just some gain automation there. EQ to cut out a little bit of the mids, give it a little bit more ambience. Um, and then Fresh Air is always fun to play with, although very easy to overdo, but I wanted this to apparently have a little bit more bite. I haven't touched this project in a couple of months, so can't always remember exactly why I did what I did and the order in which I did things, but that is what it is. And then let's see what I have going on here. So I've got some Valhalla Shimmer, which is really fun for, you can see I've got a lot of feedback here. So let me find a place where I must have some automation going on, not the utility. We don't need that. What we want is this. So just a little bit of, okay. So I guess I wanted a little bit less of the shimmer um, in this midsection when the piano comes in. Um, and we'll get to the sort of polyrhythmic piano in just a second. I want the main focus to be on that because I think it's the coolest part. But yeah, with the, the shimmer on, let me just solo just the shimmer so you can hear what this type of reverb is doing. Where shimmer allows you to do is sort of send the reverb back into itself and you get this really high sort of glitchy sound that almost sounds like sort of like a granular synthesis type thing. But here's what it sounds like. It makes it sound kind of like a synth. It's really cool. And then I've just got that, which is something I almost always do with this type of reverb, which is I've got it sidechained to, oh no, I don't have it side. Yes, yes, I have it sidechained to itself um, so that the uh, it has a natural dip in volume when the sound is loud. And as the sound fades, the reverb comes up, which gives it this really natural sounding um, clarity when you want it to be clear and then really reverbed and washed out when you want it to be reverbed and washed out. So all of those effects combine them with the synth from prior and we get something. And I was at a point where I was like, okay, this is really cool. I wanted to quickly mention, um, just while I have, uh, just while it's on my mind, that I've had some ambient shots going on here. Um, you can see they're grayed out just because I've moved the folder, but they're doing very little. They're just supporting the transitions. Um, MHA is a really cool YouTuber who has some really awesome packs, and I clearly need to go in and re... Uh, I've moved some folders recently, so some of, some of my samples got moved around. But 
Uh, ambient shots are, are, are effectively functioning is what I've got Colossus doing. Uh, the ambient shots are just supporting that kind of sound. It's not a major thing. So don't worry that those are grayed out. They're not a major part of the track. Um, the next thing I added was I was like, okay, this is sort of a cool uplifting type ambient thing. Um, it's a little bit more peaceful and calming. So naturally the way to make things sound really beautiful and fun is to get a sort of 8080 sub bassy thing kind of going on. Um, and this was, I believe this is an MHA preset actually, um, bass sub 01 and just with some gain automation to have it fade out a little bit. Beautiful sub, I love that sub. So you you add that in with everything and it just adds a whole nother layer of, of depth to this. Awesome, really fun. Um, and then the next thing I added was I wanted a little bit of granular synthy kind of some, some sort of glitchy sounds. So I went into Let's see, I don't even remember what patch I used. Okay, so I used Contemporary Drama Toolkit from Spitfire without the effects on it. Um, this just sort of has like a, let me arm it. It's like beautiful. Um, Contemporary Drama Toolkit is an awesome sample library. I really, really like it. Um, and then added some black hole to it. So we get something which is sounding a little interesting here. Washed out with the black hole. But then the fun comes in with this plugin called Emergence, which I'm not gonna go into detail as to how Emergence works. Um, it would take a little bit too much time. And I'm not sure I understand it myself. Um, to be completely honest, but there are tutorials out there. I definitely believe that the one I watched and learned about Emergence was from, uh, no surprise, Venus Theory, uh, Cameron himself. And so you add the granular synthesis onto this and all of a sudden we get that really cool, sparkly, plucky. And you add in the other layers. Really cool, uh, I love that sound. The next thing I did was uh, inspired by an artist named um, Godbody Disconnect, who does really d awesome, like m one of my favorite dark ambient artists. Um, and I believe he actually plays drums. I am not that skilled, nor do I own a drum set. So with some black hole, just threw on some And that, that makes up the basis of everything but the piano. Okay, so let's get into the piano because the piano is fun. So basically polyrhythm here, what, what we've got going on. Let's take an E minor chord, right? Uh, let me arm my piano, which I always forget to do. So we're working an E minor, right? So let's take an E minor chord. Now I'm not a skilled enough piano to actually do this without drawing it in, but the idea is let's just have competing rhythms go on. So we've got this really simple root fifth, root fifth, root fifth, functioning on quarter notes. And then we've got third root, third root, third root, functioning on triplet eighth notes. And you combine those two things together and you get something which is pretty fun. Um, and then you can change chords with it. You can add fun little melodies on top. Uh, 
uh, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And then the fun and the magic comes in in the way that you add some effects. So first thing I added is OTT because OTT on the Lab Soft Piano is one of the more beautiful sounds. You combine it with some reverb. Then there's some gain automation going on as I just bring in the sound. Um, but then the real fun comes in in just throwing H delay from um, from b -b 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 waves, and you just throw it. I, I believe this is the default setting. Um, I might have changed the the delay a little bit to get this to line up on just the eighth without the triplet. I don't remember exactly, but anyways, throwing on a delay on top of the polyrhythm. So so far, everything that's going on individually is very simple, right? We've just got quarter notes. Quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. And then these are just triplet eighth notes. Like it's very simple. You're combining simple rhythms. If you start combining really complex rhythms, this is going to get messy really fast. But then you add a delay on top of it and all of a sudden here comes the magic. So we're on E minor right now. Let's go to C major seven. on top. is one of the cooler sounds that I have ever stumbled across. I love that sound. So I was like, how can I justify adding this in? And I just sort of went for it. And I took the first half of what I've shown you. I threw the chords underneath. I added a melody to give it sort of this uh, sort of pause. I don't even know what to call this middle section, but it's just entering new piano. And then we repeat the chords build up underneath with the synth pad and that makes up the basis of the track. We start off uh, building into sort of this sound. And then we introduce the pianos in. Very slowly. You can see the gain here. Drums cut out and the piano really takes focus. We add our little melody with the vocal coming back. And then as we resolve into this nice A major chord, um, we add in the bass for some, that sort of like awesome, like big 808 feeling. With the granular synthy stuff. And uh, yeah, that's the track. I mean, everything else that's going on in the, uh, in the mastering is basically just like compression and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's it for this track. If you have any questions, if I went over anything too quick or too slow, uh, anything like that, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, I really like the way this track turned out. I will, of course, leave a link in the description to go listen to the full track if you have any interest. And until next time, I will catch you all later. Take care.